When I met her, she was trying to soar like gray owl, and so I had to shoot her down and watch her plummet while those illegal eagle feather earrings tried vainly to keep her aloft. I said when I met her, she was trying to pirouette like tall chief, so I had to trip her up. It started with field trips and encouraging parents. And war paint at Halloween that soon gave way to Hopi jewelry and Haida tattoos. It started with field trips and encouraging parents, but it ended a little bit differently. She lied about her ability to swim. Her bronze cross, an embarrassing albatross, the telltale sign of sunburnt August spent at camps with Anishinaabe names, Kiwaden, Kabayun, Wikila, and at Winona overnight camp for girls. Three sessions, she was tribal leader of eight ponytail Mohicans but worried her credibility would weaken since she'd never met the Mohicans, decided to educate herself, went to the library and asked for Last of the Mohicans. But Last of the Mohicans was lost. She found this ironic because the Mohicans were lost. Well, their language was lost. Their language didn't last, which is maybe why the last of the lost Mohicans didn't have anything left to lose, and oh, how she lusted after that last lost language. Isn't it lame? She lamented. That the last of the lingering lost Mohicans couldn't be put on back order too? And when I met her, she was trying to use Wikipedia to write her own history. Her sticky fingers shoplifting heritage minutes to weave into one-sided tapestry. She wondered if anyone she knew could tell the difference between a Montauk and a Meskwaki. And when I met her, she'd already been told off once before. By a six-foot middle-aged Mohawk, she'd incorrectly identified as Chinese, but she wasn't one to give up easily. If there, I mean my, I mean her culture could persevere year after year, so could she. So she tried to engage herself and get enraged about water rights, but ultimately she knew she'd never know the lengths to which the Navajo go to keep their children from waterborne infections. So, after reading an article about the res, left water to stagnate in her front yard until drinking it produced fevers and chills, she wanted surgery to remove all traces of mayonnaise and suburbia from her body. And while trying to lose her identity in the boiling fat of fried red skillet, she wondered if gaining weight would help her look the part or if having a couple drinks too many would help her skin change hue. She tried some hairstyles that she looked up online, but the dye made her face glow white like the stars, far from the sun-baked earth she desired when I met her. I kept trying to introduce myself, but she was busy sliding her thumbs along the edge of my history, hoping for paper cuts to prove she could bleed red too. I tried to tell her that diving blindly into someone else's story can only lead you drowning under the weight of your squash blossom necklaces, but she didn't want to listen because even the bones of her inner ear embarrassed her. And a sparrow that paints itself black will never one day be a raven, never be someone's grandfather, never try to steal the moon, but she had convinced herself it was possible to smudge out English roots with sagebrush, yet was so much more successful smudging brain cells black with solvents when she left. I tried to tell her it was too easy a way to go, but she said that being a poetic martyr was a part of her history, and who was I to argue? She'd studied and embraced where I'd only accepted. She took the good with the bad until the bad ate the good, and when the good said it was a tragedy, the bad just couldn't care less about the death of an English swallow who reminded absolutely no one of Icarus. <laughs>